Thank you so much for joining us for the interview. It has been five years since the establishment of the China International Development and Cooperation Agency. What's the role of SICA under the Belt and Road Initiative? Thank you for giving me this chance to talk about what we do. Uh, China's International Development Cooperation Agency, or in brief, SIDCA, was established in 2018. Our agency is responsible for making strategic guidelines, policies, and plans for foreign aid. And we coordinate foreign assistance resources. The Belt and Road Initiative is proposed by China, but serves as global public good. So in this sense, SIDCA puts it as one of our priorities and aims to achieving high quality BI development. So far, more than 180 countries and international organizations support us. In the past 10 years, we have arranged more than 2,000 assistance projects in 120 plus countries along the Belt and Road, established more than 80 economic and trade cooperation zones. China doesn't expect anything in return for its assistance, but has received deep friendship from the vast number of developing countries and peoples. The Western world has been seeing China using the Belt and Road Initiative to bring developing countries into a so-called debt trap. What are your thoughts on these accusations? Many of them, or media, or politicians, have different interpretations on this. But I would like to say, the debt trap repeatedly talked by many media in recent years is completely false. At present, many governments, experts, scholars, and research institutions in Western Asia and African countries have conducted detailed investigations on this matter and found that not a single developing country has fallen into a so-called debt trap due to Chinese loans. And the Chinese government always concerns to the debt pressure faced by the recipient countries. When providing interest-free loans and concessional loans to foreign countries, we fully consider the debt situation and the repayment ability of them, adhere to laws and regulations, be open and transparent, and never seek political self-interest. And besides, the Chinese government is committed to helping recipient countries alleviate their debt pressure. We have actively promoted and fully implemented the G20 Debt Service Suspension Initiative and made the largest contribution to the initiative as implementing the largest amount of debt relief among G20 members. We have signed debt suspension agreements or reached consensus with 19 African countries to help them alleviate their debt burden. At the same time, China calls on all relevant parties to make greater contribution to alleviating the debt pressure of recipient countries in accordance with the principles of joint actions and fair burden sharing. Many consider the GDI as a replacement of the Belt and Road Initiative. Help us understand what's the relationship between GDI and the BRI. In my perspective, BRI focuses on connectivity, while GDI focuses on development assistance and cooperation, highlighting small yet smart, aligning with the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the new development agenda after that. And both of them are important platforms for building a community with a shared future for mankind. And both are global public goods provided by China. They are committed to promoting mutually beneficial international cooperation.